Hello and welcome to Scroll Range. My name is Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. In this short video, I'm gonna show you how to use a spin button to create a dynamic scroll range within Excel. So let's get started with the first exercise, exercise one. All right, the first step is to insert a spin button into our worksheet. To do that, we're gonna head to the developer tab. Now, if your Excel doesn't have a developer tab, what you do is use this dropdown on the quick access toolbar, select more commands, click customize ribbon, Head over to the right, scroll down, and check the developer checkbox. Then click OK. Congratulations, now you have a developer tab. From the developer tab, we click Insert, and under Form Controls, we click Spin Button. Now what we can do is insert that anywhere we want into our worksheet. I'm gonna click and drag and insert mine right here. Awesome. Now with the Spin Button, we can click it and... <laughs> Nothing seems to happen, so like, that's great. Well, we need to go in and change some settings. So let's right click, format control. Now, there's many tabs in here, so depending on what you're working on, you're gonna wanna explore all the options, but for now, we're gonna use this cell link field, and we're gonna pick a cell that we want Excel to change when the user clicks the spin button. Click OK. Now, as the user clicks this spin button, we can see that the cell value changes accordingly. Now, the thing to note is we can still type a value into that cell. For example, let's type 100. Now, when we interact with the spin button, we can see that it increments from the current value. Let's take a quick look at some other settings. Let's right click, format control, and we can see we optionally can set a minimum value, a maximum value, and we can change the incremental change value. For example, let me hit seven and hit OK. Now when the user clicks the spin button, we can see that it changes by seven. Let me right click format controls and I'm gonna set this back to one and click okay. Okay, now that that's in place, let's go to the next exercise, exercise two. What we wanna do here is allow the user to click the spin button and scroll through the periods. So let's start by inserting a spin button. Developer, insert, form controls, spin button. Click and drag and we got it. Let's right click format control and the cell link is here. Click OK. Awesome, now when the user clicks the spin button, we can see Excel updates that cell value accordingly. Now for the first report period, it's simply gonna be equal to our year start plus our period offset, enter. And now let's write some formulas that create the periods based on our first report period. So the first one is gonna be equal to C7, enter. And the next one is gonna be equal to the value in the cell above plus one, enter. And we can fill that formula down as far as we'd like. Now as the user clicks the spin button, this range scrolls through the dates accordingly. Now let's go back down to zero. So that's scrolling by days. What if we wanted to scroll by weeks? No problem. We can right click, format control, and we'll change the incremental change value from one to seven. Click okay. And now you can see this range is scrolling by weeks. Can we scroll by months? Sure. Let's right click, format control. We're gonna change this back to one, click okay. Let's set this back to zero. And now we're gonna use the EO month function. Equals EO month. And what this does is it determines the last day of the month. So our start date is our year start, comma, and our month's argument is this period offset value. Close function and enter. And now we need to update these formulas. So the first period in our scroll range is gonna be equal to our first report period value in C7. Our next period down is gonna be equal to EO month of the value in the cell above, comma, for one month. Close function and enter. And now we can fill this down as far as we'd like. Now as the user clicks the spin button, you can see that our range scrolls through the months. What if we want to scroll through quarters? No problem. I'll set this back to zero. I'm gonna right click, format controls, and I'm gonna change the increment value to three. Now let's modify our EO month function. We're gonna say the months argument is C6 plus two, enter. And now we need to update these EO month functions as well, equals EO month. It's gonna be the value in the cell above, comma, three months, close function and enter. And now we can fill this formula down as far as we'd like. And now when the user clicks the spin button, you can see this range scrolls by quarters. Can we scroll by years? Sure. Let's set this back to zero. Right click this, format control, and we'll increment by 12. Okay, now let's change this. So it's C6 plus 11, enter. 
And then we need to update these. Equals EO month, value in the cell above, comma, 12 months, close function and enter. And once again, we can fill this formula down as far as we'd like. And now as the user clicks the spin button, this range is scrolling by years. And since this is Excel, there are of course many ways to accomplish any given task, including which type of formulas we use to generate these periods. Now, what if our report periods aren't vertical? What if instead we want them to be horizontal? No problem, we'd use the same basic principles. This would be equal to our first report period. And this would be equal to EO month, valuing the cell to the left, 12 months, close function and enter. And then of course, we can just fill this to the right as needed. And now as the user clicks, we are scrolling this range through the years. And before we leave, I want to show you some cool formatting tricks. So first of all, I'm going to set this back to days. Let me right click, format control. I'm going to change this back to one. My first report period is once again going to be equal to my year start plus my period offset. And then I need to update these as well. This is going to be equal to the value in the cell to the left plus one. And let me go ahead and fill this to the right. And we don't really need these, so let me just clear those out. Now, let's say we wanted to update this formatting. Maybe we wanted to show the year. Maybe we want to show the month. Maybe we want to show the day. Well, we'd still use these same formulas and use these same dates, but we just changed the formatting. So check it out. I'm going to set this equal to the value in the cell above, and I'm going to fill that to the right. And then I'm going to fill all of these down. Now we can just update the formatting as desired. For example, maybe this first row, we want to show the year. Open up Format Cells, click Custom, and we'll change this to YYYY. That's going to display the four-digit year. Click OK. And maybe we want this to be the month. Format Cells, Custom, MMM. Click OK. And maybe we want this to be the day. Format Cells, Custom, D. And maybe we'd like this to be the weekday. Format cells, custom, DDD. Click OK. And now we got it. And now as the user clicks the spin button, we can see that this range is scrolling through the days. And now that we've got this foundation in place, let's head to the next exercise. By the way, as you know, Excel is a big place and I'd love to help you learn more about it. I'll help you automate your manual recurring Excel tasks. I'd love to have you check out my training programs. Use the link in the description to learn more. Exercise three. Here the idea is we'd like to let this user scroll through the months. So once again, we set up a spin button. It updates this month offset cell and our report start is using the EO month function. The first argument is the year start, and the second argument is this month offset. And this is exactly what we did in the previous exercise. Now let's build our dynamic report. Equals, this first column header is gonna be equal to our report start date in C7. Enter. For the next column, we use EO month, value in the cell to the left, comma, one month. Close function, enter. And then we can just fill this to the right. And now as the user clicks the spin button, this range is scrolling through the months. Now let's calculate the values. For this, we're gonna use the SUMIFS function. And what we wanna say is we wanna add up this table's amount column, comma, but we only wanna include certain rows. We only wanna include those rows where the region column, comma, is equal to our region, comma, and where the period column, comma, is equal to our period. Close the function and enter. Now, before we fill this formula down and to the right, we need to update some cell references. So let's edit this formula. First of all, as we fill this formula down, we want to lock this date header in place. The way that we do that is by inserting a dollar sign in front of this row reference of 10. And as we fill this formula to the right, we want this region reference to be locked in. The way that we do that is by inserting a dollar sign in front of the B column reference. Enter. Now let's fill this formula down. Excellent. Now to fill it right, we have a couple of different choices. If we try to click and drag, we're gonna see that we get this unexpected result. So let's undo. Instead of clicking and dragging to the right, what we wanna do is do a copy and then paste. Excellent. Now these report values are calculated automatically. 
and now the user can click the spin button to scroll this report range dynamically. Very cool. So that's how we can set up a spin button to create this dynamic scroll range within Excel. Hopefully this is helpful. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Hey, Excel user. If you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. This video is a production of Excel University. 